Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of sunspots all of a sudden, a coronal hole stream and CME on their way to Earth, and some very cool top science news. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours were quiet except for the northern active region, which has another coronal push last night, just like the day before. On stereo, it may be small, sparse, and faint, but that small CME signature is headed at Earth. On SOHO, it is also faint, but the spreading signature appears to be a confirmation. And the endless spiral says it is coming in on the heels of the coronal hole stream. That should arrive tonight, and the CME should be Wednesday or Thursday. It will all be minor, so we look to the sunspots, which continue to grow a good bit overnight. Let's do some magnetic classification to gauge the flare risk for them. Northern active region up first, and its spread has kept the magnetism from clashing. If it happens, it's likely to be the central positive blue interacting with the caboose. Leading the groups on the south is a core umbra with southern peripherals. The south is where that one would develop and flare. And then the incoming southern sunspot groups. These are the biggest but also least magnetically complex at the moment, and the fields not only aren't clashing within the sunspot groups, they're not even staying put. Watch the two crackling areas coming in independently and then they connect with arches between them. I would expect to see a paper on that in the coming months. Coronal hole stream tonight, small CME middle of the week, solar flare watch at the sunspots. Super cool article up first describing the aggregation of material and microgravity aboard the ISS. They applied electric current. Now if you saw our plasma cosmology movie, perhaps you remember the previous experiments which found dust was lining up flowing, and even forming wave-like patterns on the ISS under that same influence. Here, they have confirmed the attraction, organization, and gone beyond to confirm that the stronger the current, the tighter the aggregate line compaction, and this plays into space science like their example of the solar system formation and aggregation, or the grander one for the cosmic web and the galactic aggregates strung along them. By the way, Billy has been toying around with a new cloud chamber at the Plasma Lab, already scoring fun-looking returns that support the general concepts of that attraction and aggregation, and also show why the charged particles help form clouds, or aggregate them. Quick climate shot to open that floodgate. Paper determined it is not possible to constrain some of the core uncertainties with the available observations. Those uncertainties are a major issue, especially with the clouds. One of the reasons is they don't fully account for the electrodynamics we've mentioned and have been mentioning for about a decade, which those climate models just got called out on this week. No, they say, climate science can't just ignore the 40 keV electrons just because it makes the modeling much harder and hurts the global warming is all our fault propaganda. I feel like ozone discussions have been creeping in more and more and if we're talking particle forcing, let's go to solar protons and ozone destruction. Little bit of model chafing here as well, as it shows that only when they include the most powerful solar blasts are they able to properly account for the ozone numbers. Yes, why not go ahead and use the greatest of all solar surges of energy to Earth? Good call. And last but not least, the polar cap patches. Most importantly of all here, in winter, when the pole is dark and not taking sunlight, it's the particle forcing that utterly controls the appearance of cold patches or lack thereof, pointing to a year-round global atmospheric exposure to that solar particle forcing. Those with our textbook should add today's papers in your head at the end of chapter five on the electric atmosphere. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.